Tonight's special guest has been featured on multiple episodes of the show and is the most requested special guest who's ever been on. When it comes to sharing dogman encounters, no one does it the way he does. Having said all that, let's bring him on now. Special guest, thanks so much for coming back. Thank you so much for having me back, Vic. (laughs) Well, it's always great to have you on, Marvin. We just appreciate your time. Marvin, for any of the listeners who haven't heard any of your prior shows, please tell them about yourself and your YouTube channel. Well, for those who um, don't know me, but I know a lot of y'all do, my name is um, Marvin Allen, born and raised in um, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, Had my um, first sighting in 2018, but my mother always told me about these creatures, you know, but when you're young, you really don't pay them no attention until you come face to face with them. After having my sighting, I found Vic on um, YouTube and um, I reached out to him and that's how it all started. And then I started my own YouTube channel. It's called Marvin Allen Doug Man Encounters. And I've been doing that for the past couple of years. Well, you do it awfully well. But um, like I said, though, Vic, I, n- I never knew that until I was getting all the feedback and your comments about how good I was and telling stories and the way I tell it. I make them feel as though they was right there as I'm telling it. And now I found my calling, something that I'm good at. And, and I'm going to stick to this because, for one thing, I love helping people. And I love when people reach out to me and share their encounters and their sightings and their experiences with me. And I'm, I'm just so grateful because I have met a lot of good people along this journey. But it ain't done yet. We, we still got a lot of road to cover. If anyone listening wants to reach out to you to share their encounter with you, how can they do that? If anybody um, had an encounter or sighting and you would like to tell it to me and I'll narrate it for you, my email address is HezekiahAllen8318 at gmail.com. Um, that's Hezekiah Allen, 8318 at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. If you have an encounter you want to share with Marvin, I'm going to post his email address in the description for tonight's show. If you've had a dogman encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest on one of my two Bigfoot shows, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let me know. All right, Marvin, please do what you do best now. All right, Vic, thank you again for having me back on. This first encounter happened in Alexandria, Louisiana. And when I was talking to this eyewitness, asked him, why would you wait so long to tell anyone about your encounter? He said, um, the reason was being was because I didn't want to be called crazy in other things. And what made him really open up to me, I told him about my experience. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into this eyewitness encounter. Like I said, this encounter right here had happened in Alexandria, Louisiana in 1973. My eyewitness and his friend said they went deer hunting one time. So they get to the spot, get up in their tree stand, and you know, they stand and they canvass the area waiting for some deers to come in. So while they standing there, my witness, you know, was talking to his friend. And as they was talking, going back and forth, my witness said he heard something about 20 yards out. He heard what sounded like crack, like, like a branch being broke. So he looks. And when he looks over there, 
he sees nothing. So his friend asked him, he said, what's wrong? What are you looking at? He said, you didn't hear that? Sound like a, a stick broke or something like that. He said, no, nah, I ain't hear nothing. So they went back to talking again. A few minutes would pass and it would happen again. Snap. Sound like another tree break. My eyewitness look over there again. He scans from left to right, left to right. And his, you know, his friend said again, what is wrong with you? He said, come on now, you can't tell me that you didn't hear that that time. He said, man, come on now, we came out here to hunt. Now you, you out here hearing things and stuff like that. After they going back and forth talking, that's when they both hear this growl coming off just in the distance. So they stop, they get silent. And they listen it. Because all they hear this time is something growling in the distance. So my eyewitness said, okay, I guess you didn't hear that. He said, yeah, I heard that. So my eyewitness, he looks, looks, he looked left to right. He still don't see nothing. He turns and he looks at his friend. That's when his friend mouth just dropped. And he said, what, what, what is wrong with you? And he pointed. My eyewitness turns around and he looks. He said about 30 to 40 yards out, they see what looks like to them. And these are the words he told me. He said he thought he was looking at a werewolf because they see this creature standing just off beside a tree with his hands up on it looking dead in their direction now they both puzzle they looking at this thing trying to figure out what it is but they don't know that's when my witness said this creature takes his hand from down off the tree and begins to walk. It's walking through the leaf litter, the dirt, the broken twigs and branches, and it's walking on an angle, but the angle is still leading in their direction. So he said, as this creature is walking on this angle, he said it walks for about 15 feet, maybe, or less. It stops. It stops and it continues to look at them again. My eyewitness said his friend raised his gun. That's when my eyewitness grabbed. He said, no. Mm -mm. Don't shoot that thing. Because we don't even know what it is. Just look at the size of it. That's when I asked him, describe this creature you seen to me he said that the head just looked overgrown he said it looked too big to even be on his body he said the head was just massive it had long arms with hands canine legs broad shoulders he said the hair wasn't real long on it and he could see the skin of the creature. Ears was pointy. And he said the eyes was like a like 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 an orangish color. And he said they just stern at this thing. That's when he said that his friend said, Man, let me shoot this thing. He said, No, I'm not letting you shoot this thing because we don't know what it is. And you don't even know if you're going to kill it. Look at the size of this thing. Said it had to be at least seven, 
close to eight feet tall. So they standing there, they pondering. And while they going back and forth, that's when the creature begins to walk again. Now it's walking in their path. Now it's walking towards them. They stop going back and forth and they look at it. And when they look at it, it stops. And when it stops, that's when my eyewitness said, this creature begin to sniff. Throwing his head left to right, sniffing. It's sniffing the air. It would sniff the air and then it would make this low guttering growl. He said it would sniff the air and then make this low guttering growl. After it stopped sniffing, they said this creature looks to his right. So my eyewitness said he looks to the right over there in that direction. And he said he not really good with distance, but he said it had to be about close to 40 yards. And when he looks over there, he sees a deer. Then he looks back at this creature. He said this creature sniffs again. He said, but when he sniffed this time, it turned his head fast back in that direction of where this deer was. He said, that's when this creature started to walk. And he said, as it was walking, it dropped down on all fours. He said, but it was moving slow. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't move fast or nothing like that. He said it moved slow. My witness said that's when that deer spotted it. And you know how them deer, when they see something in danger, that look they give them, said it turned and it bowed. He said that's when this creature went after it. Run, he said he never seen nothing move so fast. So they watch as this creature out of sight is it, it, gone. So his friends say, I think we need to leave now. He said, all right, I'll just give it a few more minutes. He said, man, did you understand what we just seen? He said, all right, come on. So they get down out of the um, tree stand and they begin to walk back out so they could leave. But my eyewitness says as they walk and leaving out this creature shows back up again. And this time he said it's about 45 yards to their left. And as they walk in to go out, he said, this creature's walking the same way. So my eyewitness said they will walk because he said they wasn't that far from leaving out. He said, but they stopped. He said, when they stopped, this creature did the same thing. Like it was mocking them. They begin to walk. They make it to the front edge of the tree line. They leaving out. They said this creature comes out too. And it just stands there. They leave go home don't tell nobody about it don't even talk about it they say two weeks would pass when they would go back now mind you not too far from the red river my witness said it was another body of water where they used to go fishing at so they goes down there 
on one side, they put their stuff down, you know, put the bait on, throws the line in. As he throws the line in, he waiting to catch something. So on the other side, he see something drinking water, but he don't know what it is at this time. But he sees something drinking water. And when it looks up, it looks right over at them. And he said it was one of these creatures. He said, but it wasn't a huge, big one. But it looked right over at them. As he's looking at this creature, he see another one come out the wood line, bipedal on his hind legs, massive, comes down to the water's edge. He said this thing squats down and it too started to drink. He said when this thing finished drinking, it looks up and it looks right over at them. Then he said this thing, it, it, it bared his teeth and then it let out this, this growl that shook him. It shook him to his core. Now mind you, his friend want to shoot at these creatures again. But he begs him, man, don't, don't, don't do that. So he didn't. They just stayed there, though. They said that the, these creatures, like, it didn't even pay him no mind. But they said after a few minutes, these creatures, they turn, they walks up in, the wood line and starts to walk like they paralleling, like they coming around. So he watching them and that's just what this speech is doing. They coming around to the other side. That's when they grab everything and they leave. And I asked him, I said, do you think that was the same creature? My witness said, no. He said, because this one was brown. It's like it had dark and light brown in it. And he said, that one had a bushy tail. So he said, no, that wasn't the same creature. He said, about a month and a half will go past and they go back to where they was the first time. They don't go back hunting, they just go back and walk. So they get down there to where they was when they had they sighting. He said, that's when everything went quiet. You couldn't hear nothing. So my witness say, I think we should just go ahead and leave. He said, because you don't hear no bugs out here. He said, no, hold up, wait a minute. So he said, man, look, you'll be here by yourself, I'm leaving. So my witness say, he starts turn around and walk back out. He said, just as his friend was beginning his turn around, that's when one of these creatures made their presence known. Crack! They hit a brick again. My witness turns around and say, what the and he looks. And when he looks, 
you see one of these creatures step from behind a tree and it walks over down on this little trail and it stares at them. Now he said his friend so eager to shoot something they shoot the shotgun the ones that got the little pellets in it boom ain't do nothing from the distance that he was standing it was just a loud noise for nothing now this creature is pissed it starts walking in that direction he turns, he shoots past my eyewitness running. My eyewitness said he turned and does the same thing, starts running. He said he can hear this creature as his feet hit the ground. He can, he can hear the heaviness to it. And it's on them. They get to the front of the tree line. Turn. When they turn, they said this creature stopped on the dime at least 15 feet from them. He said that his friend, he dropped the gun. Boom, he dropped it. Because now, He's scared. Now he don't want to feel as a threat. He said his friend drops the gun and just stand there. Now it's like they at the mercy of this beast, of this creature. And they just stand there. Because now, basically, my witness said. He was just waiting to die, waiting to be killed. So he said he just closed his eyes and put his head down. Said a few seconds was going past. He opened it up and that creature was gone. Said his friend, picked up the gun, they turned, and they left. My witness said that after that happened, he never went in those woods again. He told his friend, you know, that he grew up with, he said that last situation could have been bad for the both of us. We both could have got killed that day. All because you wanted to shoot. He said, but after the day, I can't deal with you no more. So he said, after that day, he didn't call him, he didn't hang out with him. He didn't do nothing with him again. And that was that encounter that happened in Alexandria, Louisiana. All right, now, this next encounter that I'm about to tell you about, it happened in Pennsylvania. And didn't give me the location because they still having problems till this day and on the land that they own. But this is when my witness had her very first encounter. My witness, who name I'm gonna use, not her real name, but um, we'll just call her T. T said that she was 10 years old. Said she was laying 
in the front room on the couch. Now she said the way the couch was, it was facing the window. And she said it sat not too far from it. So she said she laid on the couch and she fell asleep. She said, but something would wake her when she would hear tapping sounds on the window. Ta -ta -ta. Ta -ta -ta. Ta -ta -ta. So she looks over, you know, rub her eyes. She looks over. And she said, the first thing she seen was these glowing red eyes. She said, then she seen this large pointy nose pushed against the window as it showed its teeth. So she set up. And she continued to look. She said, that's when this creature, because during this time, she didn't even know what it was. But y'all will find out later. She said it tapped again. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. And it continued to press his nose and bare his teeth at her. That's when she jumped up and jumped behind the couch. She said she just sat there hoping that this thing would go away. So she would raise her head up and she would peek. When she peeked, she said this creature was still there. It still was looking in the window at her. So she sat there, she said, but she don't know how long. Until finally, when she looked again, this creature was gone. Now, during that time, she didn't know what this thing was at all until later years. So she said it happened 94, 95, one of those years. And Susquehanna Township at Whisper Woods Apartment. Now, mind you, she say these apartments is three-story apartments. And you would have to buzz to get in if you didn't have your key. So she said during this time, she was there babysitting her cousin. So she said she was sitting in the house, you know, just watching TV. All of a sudden, her cousin come in crying. And she asked her, she said, what's wrong with you? She looked at her calmly and said, I seen a werewolf. And when she said that at the time, my witness said that she smirked kind of laughed. And then she looked into her face and her eyes again. And this time, she knew that she was telling her the truth. So she told her, she said, come and show me where you seen it at? She said, no, I'm not going back out there. No, no, I'm not. She said, come on, you're going to be all right. Not going to stay out that long. Just show me where you seen it at. 
So they goes down. Now, mind you, outside to the left is two great big dumpsters. So they goes down and they walk to the front. And they got huge windows. So they look out these huge windows. She said, where did you see it at? She said, I seen it over there by the dumpster. So my eyewitness goes out with her cousin behind her. And they stand right there in front of the building, right there by the door. My witness said about 40 feet is where these dumpsters was. Now, mind you, she said the light was out. It was lit up. So you could see everything clear. That's when she said she seen the biggest dug she ever seen in her life. She said, but it was down on all fours. She said, but this thing was so big that you could see the top of it, like where the head at, over top of the dumpster. She said, and it walked. And it walked around the front. It sniffed, and then it walked around again. She said when it got to the front this time, it put both of its, yes, she said it had hands, hands on top of the dumpster, and it stood up on its hind legs. She said that's when this creature began to dig through the trash. She said, and as it's pulling stuff out, smell it, shake it, then throw it on the ground. It kept doing that. It would move around on the side, digging there again, smell it, shake it, then like throw it on the ground. Now, some of the stuff this creature ate, some of the leftover trash this creature ate. And she said it kept it kept doing that. She said because she watched this creature for about at least 10 minutes. She watched this creature just go around the dumpster, pulling stuff out and just eating it. She said that's when her cousin got close behind her and held on to her, peeking around her arm at this creature. She said, but the one thing about this creature in its description said it was tall. She said it wasn't bulky like other creatures that people see. She said, but it was tall. It had kind of broad shoulders. She said it was dark brown with light brown patches. She said, but some of the hair on this creature had spots, like it had manes or something. She said it had a bushy tail with a mane. She said it had pointy ears and it had yellow glowing eyes. She said after this creature continued to walk around, eat trash, it stopped. It turned and it looked over in their direction. That's when she said her cousin grabbed her and pushed her face 
and I hear in her back and say, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's leave, let's leave. It's going to get us. It saw me. And they backed up towards the door. She put the key in. And they went in. She stood there and continued to watch this creature. And she said when she turned around and looked, she said, this creature grinned. This creature smiled at her. She said, this thing just looked like it literally smiled at them. She said she couldn't explain it no other way. She said that's when it began to walk down to where this patch of woods was. And it walked up in there. And it disappeared in the night. Now and again, my witness used to tell her kids about these things and they just thought she was crazy. Especially her son. So one week, she was looking at something on TV. And he was like, Ma, can we go fishing? She was like, huh? He said, can we go fishing? My witness said that she knew, her son knew she loved fishing. So he finally talks her into going fishing. And where they went at, it was a, it was a hot spot for these creatures. But never in a million years, she thought that she would run into one again this day. She said one weekend, her and her son, they pack up and they drive to go fishing. This happened in 2021. And where they was at, it was much forest land, 85,000 acres. So they went to this place that's called Mashaw State Forest. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, y'all, but the way she told me, um, I spelled the M-I-C-H-U-A-X. Maybe I'm wrong, but you know what I'm trying to say. So they go to this state park and they find a spot. So they drove all the way down and they parked. Not right there at the water's edge. They parked down there by the water's edge. So they both get out, grab their gear. And the sun had went to the right and she had went to the left. But she went quite a few ways up in the forest to get her a nice spot. But from where she was at, she could still see her car. So put her stuff down, put a bait on, she cast a line, and she proceeded to fish. She said, as she's there, you know, trying to catch her first fish, she see this large tree just rolling down this hill. 
like like down the you know down the mountain and she looked like what the so really she didn't pay no attention but she was just trying to figure why would a tree be rolling down you know down this hill down this mountain so she continued to fish that's when she hear another noise she hear what sounded like a tree crack break so she looks over And when she looks over, she see this creature standing beside this tree with his hands up on it, looking right over at her. So she looking at it. And as she watching it, she said that's when this creature took his hand down and it took a few steps to his left and it stood there. She said, as he was watching it, that's when everything changed about this creature. She said, that's when this creature put his arms down and his ears went back like they laid down. And it began to walk in her direction. She said, at first, this creature was walking slow. Then it began to pick up the pace. And once it did that, that's when she said she knew it was time to go. She ran. She made it back over there. Her son said, what's wrong? What's wrong? She said, let's go. It's one of those things. First thing her son said, Ma, come on. Don't do that. That's when all you hear is crash, boom, boom. You hear something coming through the tree line, and it's coming fast. They go over. They put everything in the car. She tell them, let's, let's start it up. Let's go. Let's go. That's when he backs up, he turns around, and the way that they was going out, she say, look, you can't drive that fast because you will mess the tires up on the car. You will mess the car up. So basically, he had to drive slow. And as he's driving slow, she looks over out his window, and she could see that creature running parallel in their direction and she said it looked like he was getting close that's when she tell her son drive drive it drive it drive it go faster she said but mind you told me don't go faster he started going fast he going fast. They driving. As he's driving, and they almost coming out to where they came in at, he looks out the corner of his eye what he told his mother. And she sang. And he sang that creature inside this tree line running keeping up with them he breaks out leaving out he makes that turn and he stops and when he stopped his mother said what are you doing why did you stop the car he said, and he started breathing fast, like he hyperventilated, you know? So 
his mother was like, look, just scoot over and I scoot over and I drive. So they switched sides. She said when she got in the driver's seat, she looked over, that creature was standing there. It was just standing there, right there at the tree line with his hands on the tree. And she said, this thing had amber eyes and it's looking right at her. Burning his teeth. And she drove off. They get home. And she tell her son, you believe him now? Say, um, yeah, I believe I believe him now, man. I believe I believe him now. Because I, I, I had a chance to see one for myself. So that was her encounters. And that's just a few that she gave me. And I just wanted to share it with y'all. And I hope y'all like that one. Okay, now this next encounter, it comes from a spot where I had, um, did an investigation a few um, years before. And when my um, research partner, we went to this location, they wouldn't give us access to go on the land because um for some reason they called the police on us and all that but anyway this encounter right here it came near this research spot and it's a little bit of houses that set not far from this spot that's called the mccain forest where these creatures live and be at it's about three houses that set about i'm gonna say roughly no more than 50 feet from it if not less so my eyewitness said that her son had, had three dogs and he used to keep them over there and she used to you know get up feed them let them get out and walk and she would put them in this cage they had a real real big cage so they had enough room for all of them and they could walk around in there she said that about two months in she started hearing sounds at night when in the house laying down and she would hear what sounded like a person walking she would hear sniffing she would get up turn on her back light and she would look out back but she wouldn't see nothing she would wonder why the dogs would never bark because they always did but she said on some nights they just got so quiet. So she sees nothing. She goes back in. She lays down. She go to sleep. Get up the next day. She feeds them, you know, water and stuff like that. And let them come out. And she let them run around. Now, mind you, like I said, where these houses was, it's nothing but woods. And I told you, it's right there near the McCain Force. So she get, you know, let them run around and let them play for a while. And then she'll put them back in. She go back in the house, sit down, she watches TV. So she said about 11.30, you know, she called it a night. She went in there to go to sleep. She said on this particular night, she didn't hear nothing. Everything was quiet. Everything was just silent. So the next day, she gets up. She says she gets up 
get herself together, make her something to eat, and then she says she's gonna go out here and you know feed the dogs and let them run around. So that's what she do. Gets up after she finished, she opens the back door, she goes out. When she walks over to the cage, she's mortified. She grabs her mouth. The cage is like somebody just bent, bent these bars and it, and it just opened up the cage. She see blood. So she walks, walks down to this little path that leads into the woods. Cause she found this blood trail. And when she gets down there, she looks around and what she sees by a tree, it, it, it just broke her heart. She see the head of one of these dogs just sitting there. No other body parts, just the head. So she immediately called her son. Shoots over there. Goes back there. He said, he asked his mom, he said, mom, what happened? He said, baby, I don't know what happened. Just look at the cage. Ain't no other dog did that. Ain't no animal did that. And ain't no person been them. So he walks into that wood line, looking, look, look, looking around. Said he walked for a few minutes. That's when he caught the smell of something that wasn't right, like like something dead, uh, urine, something that smelled like a like a dove would smell if it was wet. He smelled all that, but he didn't see nothing. Turn, he goes back, take the head, put it in the bag, and he 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 buries it. And he tell his mother, he say, "Ma." I don't know what happened either. Say, but I'm not getting no more dogs. That's it. So she was telling them that she was sorry that, you know, when they going, you know, back and forth, we said it ain't your fault. And we yoga and stuff like that. So he leaves. She goes in the house. She watches TV. She said around sunset. It's like dark outside, but not completely dark. She says she's sitting there, still watching TV, and she hear this howl, like, like coming from off in the distance. She goes, open the back door, and she looks out. She sees nothing. So she shut the door. Again, she hear this howl again. Goes, she opens up the back door. He said when she opened it this time, she noticed her neighbor Is standing outside too. And she yelled down over there. She said, Did you hear that? You know, and her neighbor is an elderly woman too. She said, Yeah, I heard it, but I don't know what that was. She said, Me neither. She said, but I'm going back in the house because I don't want to see it. So they both left, they went in the house. So she said she continued to watch TV finish up, got herself ready for bed. So she in her room and she's sitting on the side of her bed. 
She said just before she was getting ready to lay down, she hear boom, 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 something knocking on the side of our house. But she continued to sit there. She said a few seconds would pass and then she would hear again on the other side. Boom. 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 She's still sitting there and she listening. Then she can hear footsteps, the crunch of the leaves and twigs and little sticks breaking. And then she hear heavy breathing just near her window. She stands up. She turns slow. She look over at the window. Now mind you, her son had put lights out for her that she could turn on, but she never used them. So she looks over at the window. She still hear that heavy breathing. So she walks over to the door. She turns the light out. That's when she see this massive silhouette of this creature. And it's standing up bipedal and it's sideways and she can see the long snout on it and the pointy ears and she can see part of his body and she know this creature standing up for a fact just because the size and the height of the window, which is about the to the top of the window, it was about nine feet. It was up high. And this creature was up there. Then she said this creature begins to growl, low but powerful. She went back and she said, on the side of her bed again. She said, that's when his feet turned and it faced the window. And it reached up and it began to tap on the window. To tap, to tap, to tap. She said it did that around about several times. She reached over to a nightstand to grab her phone. And when she grabbed her phone and began to dial her son's number, that's when this creature made a louder, more powerful growl. She said it was louder, way louder than the other one. She said it was like this creature knew what I had in my hand because it was looking right in at me. As soon as I, you know, got that phone. That's when this 
things started to growl. She said she, she could just feel it just resonating through her. She said, so she placed it on her leg and put her hand over it. She said, the growling stopped. She said, then this creature turned and it began to walk back to the back. She watched it as it walked away. She gets up. She goes in the kitchen. And she looks out the window. And she see this creature walking towards that tree line. Turns again looks in her direction and then leave. My witness said she didn't go to sleep and then that night. The next day she called her son immediately. He comes over. She tells him of what she saw. She said at first he thought that she was playing. She said, but until he looked into her eyes and seen them tears, she said he knew that I was telling the truth. So he said that he was going to stay over there for a few days. So he said two days would pass, nothing. He said the third day, he gets up and he takes a walk. He starts to walk through that trail in our backyard. He said he walked for about 15 minutes. And when he stopped, he see a skull. First, he thought it was some type of squirrel or something, he said, but it was way too big. And he looked at it, and it was the skull of one of his dogs. He said he picked it up, carried it back, he showed his mother, and he told her, he said, I found this when I was walking. That's the second one. They never found the third. So I mean, mother, they goes in, sit down, she makes something to eat. They eat and they both go in there and they watch TV. About 11.30, they both decide to turn in. She went to sleep. She said, her son stayed up. And she said, this is what her son told her, and then she told me. She said her son was just sitting there, still watching TV. She said, when about 12 o'clock, he said that's when he started getting tired, getting sleepy. No rubbing his eyes. So we said he was saying to himself that he was, you know, getting ready to go to bed. He just didn't want to fight it. Said he sat there for a few more minutes, and that's when he heard a bang. He heard a loud bang on the back door. Pops jumps up. What the? He goes. And he looks out the window. He sees nothing. Go back in there and he sit down. Five or ten seconds would pass. Bam! He hit again. Gets up. Looks out the window again. He sees nothing. Third time. Boom! It hit it again. And this time he grabs his gun. Gets up, he looks out the window. And when he looks out the window, he see something peeking from behind this big tree that they had in the yard. 
He see that this thing is peaking, but he only see one yellow eye. But my eyewitness said, he told her that that eye was up too high to be some other kind of animal and it was too large. He said, so we continued to watch it. He said, after a few seconds, this thing stepped from behind the tree. Mind you, the moon out, it's light out there so you could see. So it steps out. He said, this thing was blacker than black. He see this dark black silhouette of this creature with those yellow glowing eyes. He said it steps out from behind a tree and it stands there. And he told his mother when he was standing there, he was saying in his mind, mother, you must have been the one that my dog, so now I'm a you. He opens the back door and he stands there. Cocks his gun, he put one in the chamber. He holds it down to his side at first, watching this creature. Then he aimed it. But when he aimed it, he said, that's when he said, you can see this dug head swaying to the left and to the right, left and right. He said it messed his head up. He said, because he never seen an animal or whatever this thing was do nothing like that. Like it knew what he had. He said, then he put it down and the creature stopped. Said it took two steps. When it stopped at the second step, my witness son came up with the gun again. Aim. She said that's when her son told her this thing started to growl at him loud and massive to let him know you better leave or get hurt one. So my witness son still got the gun cocked and aimed and ready to go. That's when this creature takes a few more steps. And when it did it that time, my witness said, her son told her that he lost. It's like everything went blank. Boom, boom, boom. Shooting three times. And he said, he told her, you know how a bullet sound when it hits something like and make a certain sound? He said he heard that. And he said he seen this creature flinch to the left. Said then it made out this awful sound, a sound that he never heard before. And then it started to growl again. My witness said, her son said he still had this gun pointing at him. She said, because he was thinking if it walks some more, I'm unloaded in him. So he just standing there, growling, making these noises. And then it turns and it walks back behind that tree, continuing to look at him, to stare at him. My witness said her son shot again, but this time he hit the tree. He said that's when this creature came out from behind that tree again. And it walked, and then it turned, and it went back inside the tree line. His mother wakes up and asks him, what is going on? And he told her, I seen that thing. 
and I think I shot it. She said, did you kill it? She said, no, my, walked away. She said, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. And he was telling his mother, no, no, it ain't. Because they know if it come back here, it's going to get shot again or killed. So the next morning, son had to leave because he had to go into another town to pick something up. Now his mother was alone again. And she said, later that night, the banging on the door, the turning the doorknobs, the tapping on the windows. She said this creature wouldn't let up. She running from place to place, checking and make sure everything is locked up. Then it finally stopped. Standing. Right there near the kitchen, just listening. She said after about a minute, boom. She hear what sounded like something or somebody jumped on her roof and then it began to walk it began to pace side to side back and forth it did that for about a minute and then it stopped when it stopped she listened then she heard a something hit the ground so she was saying that this creature must have jumped down and she said that she forgot she had left them open she left the front room shades open so she said when she was beginning to walk in that direction to shed them she said that's when this creature made its presence known she said she was about three steps from it. And then she stopped. She stopped with her head down. And that's when she slowly began to raise her head. Up, 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 up. And she said now she was looking in the face of a monster. She said this creature just stared at her, looking down at her, showing these massive teeth. But she remembered what her son told her. He said, I think I shot it. She said, but she looking and she don't see no marks or dried up blood on this creature at all. Then she was thinking, is this the same one? Or is it more of them out there? That's what she thinking. This is the stuff that's going through her mind now. Because now she thinks it's more than one of these creatures. Because she don't see a wound on it. She don't see no dried up blood on it. She said that's when she looked back down at the floor. She said because she couldn't look at this thing. She's saying it was just hideous. Meaning this thing should not exist. But she put her head back down, looking at the floor. She said she just started thinking. Her whole life was flashing during this time. Then she looked back up and that creature was gone. I asked her, why didn't you think that this wasn't the same creature? She said, because I didn't see no wounds on it, no dried up blood or nothing like that. I didn't see nothing. And plus, that one that I seen, it was a little bit taller than the one I seen at the front room window. So now she knew it was more of these things. 
Nancy asking the question, are they breeding? Are they doing this? Are they doing that? All this stuff is going through her head now. And she trying to figure it out. Her son would come back and he would check on his mother, ask her, you are. She said it came back, but this was a different one. This wasn't the one that you said you shot. It must be a lot of them back there. They must be breeding. This is what she's telling him. So he said, mind you might be right. So he convinced his mother to come stay with him until she find another place. And that's what she did. And that's her encounter. Marvin, I don't know how you do it, but no one does it the way you do. Oh, thanks, Vic, man. And um, you gave me the chance to open up and um, start sharing these others' encounters and feeling comfortable just being on your show because um, you have helped a lot of people by bringing them on and opening up and making them feel comfortable. You know, just like having a home you can go to and not being judged. And, you know, with that, man, you know, I definitely commend you. Well, thanks, but Like you said on previous shows, you leave your phone on for calls in the middle of the night from eyewitnesses. So thank you for helping eyewitnesses what you do. Yeah, and that, that's one thing I, I, I love to do. And I, I just found out, you know, being in this field, you know, you'd be surprised of the people that you come across that seeing these creatures and other beings from other places so it's it's just amazing though but it's i mean it's a good one and um i love what i do i'm gonna continue to do it as long as people keep sending me their encounters i'm gonna keep sharing them well guess what i was saying i hope you do continue to do that because after all you're born to do this but having said that i can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing these new experiences with us. I really appreciate it. No problem, Vic. Like I said, anytime, man. You know, as long as they want me to come back, I'm going to come back every time with new ones. So you don't have to worry about that. Well, that'll make a lot of people happy. Marvin, thanks again so much for coming on and doing this show. I really do appreciate it. And if I can ever help you in the future, then please let me know. But having said that, thanks again so much for your time. Have a great night.